The golden ratio is a mathematical phenomenon that can explain everything from tornadoes to the Mona Lisa, the pyramids to sunflowers and seashells, and why some people are much more attractive than others, at least according to thousands of TikTok posts and a bunch of entrepreneurial cosmetic surgeons. So how did we come to consider this obscure formula to be both the secret of life and the ultimate standard of beauty? Way back in 1202, Leonardo of Pisa, also known as Fibonacci, wrote a book in which he introduced Europe to the Arabic numerals we use today. But buried in chapter 12, there was a sequence of numbers discovered by the ancient Hindu poet Pingala. It goes something like this. In this sequence, each new number is the sum of the previous two. So the first and second numbers add up to the third, the third and the fourth add up to the fifth, and so on. Fibonacci explained this progression using the example of a field of incestuous rabbits. Say we want to draw a rectangle. Let's make the length one Fibonacci number and the height the next Fibonacci number. This is known as the golden rectangle. The approximate ratio of the height to the width is called the golden ratio or the golden section. The extraordinary thing about this rectangle is that if you cut off a perfect square, you're left with a smaller rectangle of exactly the same proportions. Now watch what happens when we start cutting out smaller and smaller squares. In the 1860s, a German psychologist named Gustav Fechner showed people a variety of rectangles and asked them to pick their favorite. He reported that the winner was the golden rectangle. And so began the beguiling idea that there's a particular proportion that is the most beautiful to the human eye. And you don't have to look far to see the golden ratio all around us. In a head of sunflower seeds, there are two sets of interlocking spirals. If you count all the spirals going one way, you get one Fibonacci number. And if you count all the spirals going the other way, you'll get the next Fibonacci number. But nature is not always so obliging. Snails, for example, grow their shells at a rate dependent on how much calcium is available, not according to the golden ratio. There are many spirals in nature, and some of them are very mathematically interesting. But just because something is a spiral does not mean it's a golden spiral. Associations between the golden ratio and what humans find beautiful may be even more bogus. Remember Gustav Fechner's study? It was disproved in 1974 when University of Toronto professor Michael Godkowicz concluded the reported preference for the golden rectangle was due to its position in the range of rectangles. More recent studies have found that, given 48 options, it is almost impossible to even pick out the golden rectangle by eye. And despite containing some pretty interesting maths, the Parthenon in Athens does not display the golden ratio. More concerning are the supposed links between the golden ratio and facial beauty, which over the past decades have seen a slew of inventions, from a golden mask which was meant to be the blueprint for the perfect face, to more recent grid filters on TikTok claiming to test or correct your face according to the golden ratio, perpetuating not only unrealistic beauty standards, but bad maths too. The idea that one number can explain everything, from ram's horns and flowers to artistic masterpieces and human faces, is an appealing one and speaks to our need to make sense of a chaotic universe. The golden ratio is part of an interwoven universe, not of ancient art, history and nature, but of mathematics and geometry, an interwovenness that can be actually proven. The good news is there is no mathematical law that defines who is and isn't beautiful. Regardless of the golden ratio, someone somewhere thinks you're a total stunner.